All right, guys. Our next guest is one of the fastest rising stars in the UFC, currently undefeated. She takes on JJ Aldrich at UFC on ESPN Plus 6 on March 23rd. She is the future, but we are lucky enough to have her on the show today. Macy Barber, welcome to Submission Radio. How are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on here. No, it's a pleasure. And we saw you were at UFC 235 this past week. And tell us, what was the whole experience like for you? It was a blast. You know, I mean, I got to be out there with it, with uh, teammate Anthony Smith, um, you know, who didn't walk away with a win. But um, we're still, you know, I went out there and, and got to help support and do media out there and kind of put my feet in the water for that. And, um, yeah, overall, it's just a great experience. And, um I learned a lot and, and got to continue to train because I'm in camp. So all my coaches were out there. So being able to be in camp and, and then still travel was, was good. Does it kind of give you a, a bit of a preview of things to come, sort of the, the UFC flying you out? Well, I guess not flying you out there because you're at the PI, but kind of getting you in that media sense and, and I guess getting getting amongst everything and, and getting your name out there? Yeah, I mean, it was, it was great. It worked out perfectly just because, you know, um, had I not – um, had coaches out there, I, I wouldn't have gone to the to the media and, and done all of that. But since I had coaches out there who I needed to work with anyways, um, it just kind of worked out that I would I would do both. Um, but yeah, like I said, if I didn't have coaches out there, I probably wouldn't have been out at, at 235 and and um, and done any of the media just because I'm so close to a fight. But um, it worked out perfectly, and it was you know great to learn and. And start to start to be in that uh, scene. So I had a lot of fun. Mm. You mentioned him before. What did you think of Anthony? Obviously, he didn't get the win uh, that this past weekend. But what did you think of his fight with John Jones? A lot of people a lot ha have a lot more respect for Anthony, especially for you know what happened with the with the knee and him fighting on through that. Definitely. I mean, he's he's definitely uh, his name fits in perfectly. You know, Lionheart. Um, Honestly, as far as the fight goes, it's hard for me to say, oh, you should have done this, you should have done that, because I don't know what it's like to be in that position. And, I mean, there's a lot of people who, I mean, nobody wants to fight John. And so the fact that he, he stepped up and he wanted, you know, because he's going for the title. And, and I can definitely see Anthony going back and fighting for the title again um, and, and having a better chance this time at, at figuring it out and, and taking the title because I think he, he kind of – held back on what he wanted to do and and um there were a lot of things that they worked on uh him and mark that that just didn't come out and, and you could tell that he wanted to do th the things that he wanted to do but it just didn't come out and um i think that if he was to go back and do the fight again and and they were to to do it the way they wanted to fight the fight then um he would have come out come out victorious Mm -hmm. Absolutely, we had we had a lot of friends sort of watching the fights with us that hadn't seen Anthony before, and as soon as they heard him talk, they were like, "Dude, he's a stand-up guy. We we like this guy. He's a really nice dude." And I think that really comes across as well. Um, what's fascinating, Macy, is you've got a countdown timer on your phone for when you reach twenty-three and eight months. Of course, that's the age that John Jones was when he won the title, making him the youngest champion in UFC history. When did you decide to do that? And sort of how often do you look at that timer as a bit of a reminder? Um, well, it's on my home page, so I see it every day, uh, a lot, like all the time. Um, I also have one that I do for like each of my fights. So as soon as I get a fight lined up, I also have a countdown for like the fights that I have coming up. But um, I think I decided to do that. I want to say it was about a year, a year and a half ago now, or maybe like maybe a little less, maybe like a year. Um, but yeah, it was just something that that I just wanted to do, and and. It helps me because, like, it, it helps me to stay motivated, um, and it just kind of helps as a reminder. You know, when you go to turn on your phone and instead of going on Instagram, the first thing that you see is is your countdown for, for a goal that you've set. Mm. And uh, it just kind of, you know, like a daily reminder. Um, and, yeah, it's just something that, that I started, and, and I just continue to, to keep on there. You know, every time I, I don't change phones often, but if I do, I always have to, like, put it back up there. But, <laughs> Well, it's interesting that you're gunning to beat his record, and you were just at his fight this past weekend. You even recently told him over Instagram that your time is coming and you're going to crush his record. Did you get a chance to see him or talk to him at all this past weekend and talk about this timer and the fact that you're gunning to be the youngest champion? 
Um, I did. I saw him in the back a little bit. I didn't get to talk to him because I was, you know, I was coming to him from. Uh, but yeah, I mean, he just said, he he looked over when I was across the room and he just said, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Um, and, and that and that he was, you know, um, I probably can't say it word for word, but he was just like, you know, you've done a lot and you you're you're accomplishing like great things and um he just said keep it up and and yeah i didn't really get to have much of a conversation with him but that's what he said and um yeah it was it was nice to see him uh my my coach izzy um izzy martinez is was his wrestling coach and so he's actually cornering me for the fight and um john just has a really good team around him he's got a lot of good energy uh, around him and um i think that's one of the things that that makes him also a great athlete is having a great team around him and and same thing with anthony and like all of these all of these athletes i mean you you build a strong team around you and and that's what kind of helps you stay motivated and uh continue to progress in your career Mm. it's no secret obviously that you know you're on your way to potentially being a huge star and that's that's kind of one of the goals that you've set for yourself and I guess, obviously, John Jones being one of, if not the UFC's biggest stars at the moment, with all the and, and he, with all the controversies that he's had, aside from that, he's had an excellent and stellar run. Do you sort of look at his career and kind of take a lot of lessons from that, uh, I guess, in the way that you want to navigate your career? Um, I try to take lessons from, like, every athlete. Uh, in terms of, of the controversy that John's had, I, I, I don't know. Um, there's athletes... I would say this about every athlete, you know, there's, there's things that I look up to them, um, for, and there's things that I, I definitely never, ever, ever want to be like, and, and that goes with everyone. And, um, I think the things that John does well is his ability to have the range, you know, he can, he can strike from far away, he can strike from up close, he can throw his elbows, he can, he combines that with his, um, we were talking about it today with his, his preconditioning of, uh, strike so like he'll throw a front kick but then he'll throw the same kick but then it'll change into a different thing and then it'll change into something else and then he just keeps you guessing and I think that's the biggest thing that I look up to him at, uh, for uh, the rest of the stuff um, I, I don't try to be like anybody else you know um, but I definitely like to take pieces away from each athlete and and try them into our our, our mm. game mm. You told Dana White that you'll be a bigger star than Ronda O'Connor or any other stars that he has. What was his reaction? What did he say to you when you said that? He said, keep doing what you're doing, and I believe it. Um, you know, he just said, you keep putting on performances like that, and, and I have no doubt in my mind. Um, and that was that was cool to hear, you know. Uh, but it's true. I mean, right now, the UFC, they don't have a ton of, you know, big names aside from John. And, uh, I mean, they have a lot of big names, but they're not they're not putting out, you know, like – for instance, like Conor McGregor. Like if you say Conor McGregor to just about anybody in this world, they're going to be like, oh, yeah, that guy, the guy with the whiskey or the guy with, <laughs> with, with this. You know, like mm. they understand who that is. And, and I'm not saying, you know, that that a lot of people have, have come back and they're like, well, that's putting a lot of pressure on yourself. And if the way I look at it is if you're marketable and you're a good, um, well-spoken person, then you don't have to like, it's not a lot of pressure in terms of fighting. Sure, I have to perform, and I'm going to continue to do that regardless. But also being able to rep- represent myself well outside of the cage is is another thing that I'm talking about. You know, I'm not just saying, oh, I'm going to stay undefeated, you know, like Ronda, and I'm going to do this and this and this. And what I mean by that is, like, when, I, when it goes back to the pressure is I don't feel pressure because I understand that everybody loses. Everybody is going to, you know, but it's how you come back from a loss, and it's, um, and it's how you represent yourself. And I just feel like I fit that well in terms of being able to be a well-spoken athlete and then also be a high-level athlete who can perform and back up what they're talking about. And, and I just feel like there's there's there are a lot of athletes like that, but I definitely want to maximize my ability to do that. Well, because I, I was going to say, like, when you, when you look at the recipe for becoming a star, it's, it's kind of like – Sometimes people say like you never really know. It's like lightning, you know, lightning in a bottle. Like Ronda was so dominant, but she was also a pioneer. Connor's sort of brash and right. outspoken, and that's sort of what like he's obviously su- successful in the cage as well. But it was it was the talk that got people's attention. What what do you think it'll yeah. sort of be for you? Do you think it'll sort of be I guess your your confidence, your demeanor? I, I don't expect too much trash talking from you in the future. What what do you think is your sort of your path to becoming that kind of star? I mean, honestly, I think it's just being myself. I went from 
and I'm not trying to be like, oh, I just have to be me and I'm going to be this great, fantastic, <laughs> uh, uh, successful person. But I definitely feel like I have that, you know, it just kind of comes naturally as, is I can, I can fit into molding into whatever, whatever I need to be. Um, I don't necessarily trash talk because I don't have anything against the person I'm, I'm fighting, you know, or I have it at the moment. Um, but I'm definitely not afraid to say what I, what I feel or, or how I feel. Um, but right now it's just not necessary. You know, I haven't had to say anything to, to really get under someone's skin and I'm not going to say something just to get under someone's skin when, when there's like no point to it. You know, I mean, if we're going to fight, we're going to fight regardless. So there's no need for me to start, start saying something to, to make you want to fight me more. Like it really doesn't matter to me in terms of that. Um, but if we're being honest, like, like some things that I thought about is, um, like this up and coming fight. I mean, with JJ Aldrich, the way I kind of look at it in my head is I've already fought two of the, two of the girls in their camp. So like, I don't have to bring it up and be like, all right, I took that girl out. I took that girl out. And now it's you. But in a way, that's kind of how I look at it. But I don't necessarily have to go out and speak that. Like, I don't feel like that's something I have to do. But it's the truth, you know? I mean, I went out and I fought um, in LFA. I fought uh, Mallory Martin, and then I fought Audrey Perkins, and now I'm fighting JJ. And then eventually when I go back to 115, I'll fight, I'll fight Rose, you know? And that'll be one, two, three, four from the same camp. So that's kind of like a story in the back of my head. But as far as trash talking and, like, my the way I'm going to build my name or any of that, I think it's just the fighting. I mean, if you fight and you perform and you're someone that people want to watch, then you're just going to continue to grow. You know, I went from uh, my first fight in the UFC, I got 50,000 followers almost. So, wow. yeah, I went from having 7,000 followers to in two days I had 47,000 followers. And, <laughs> um, and I mean, that's not, you can tell me that that's, not someone who's coming to be a star because I don't see very many athletes that, that go and grow 40, 50,000 followers overnight. Mm. Uh, we want to talk a little bit more about the division and your opponent, JJ, but before we do, just want to get some background info on you, Macy. When did you first start watching MMA? When did you first get into it? And were there fighters that you kind of watched before you got into the sport that you kind of enjoyed watching more than others? Absolutely. Uh, in terms of when I started watching MMA, it was probably around 2010, um, which is when I, you know, really started being in the martial arts world of like, sorry, I'm going to move this camera just a little bit. That's all good. So you, would have, you, would, you would have been around, you would have been about 10 years old when you began yeah, watching. Yeah, about 10 years. Yeah, yeah, roughly. Um, so that's when I started watching it. But the main person that I watched, you know, was or the main people that I, that I always wanted to watch. Like, no matter what card it was, I was always wanted to watch Cowboy. I always wanted to watch Robbie. I always wanted to watch, um, you know, the, the, the fight that stands out to me was um, Roy McDonald and Robbie Lawler. That was a huge fight that I wanted mm. to watch. Um, like, those kind of fights for me, even though that's not, like, the style that I necessarily want to go for is the, the, the brawl and the fight, but that's, like, what, what I enjoyed watching. And, um, yeah, definitely, especially coming back, having Robbie fight at 235, um, I was so excited for that fight. <laughs> but, like, he's kind of a fighter and cowboy and, like, all of those guys are the people that I, I watched for the most part and I wanted to continue on with their career and, and follow along because they, they were people I did look up to in terms of uh, their style or their mentality um, when it comes to the fight. And 2010, that was such a great era. You had, you know, the, the Brock Lesnar's, the BJ Pans, the Anderson Silvers of the world around. And you even, you mentioned Cowboy, a UFC Denver. Obviously, that's another guy that you got to fight on the same card as. So it's... it's cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all happening for you. Just wondering, sort of, you, you decided not to go to college and to sort of pursue fighting full time. When did you make that decision? Did you know that from a very young age before you finished high school? Or were there, were there any other careers that you flirted with? Were we, were we close to seeing, you know, Macy Barber the doctor or Macy Barber the lawyer or anything like that? Or was it always going to be fighting? So, um, yeah, I definitely, I definitely knew that I wanted to fight right out of high school. Um, I've grown up doing martial arts my whole life. So I started when I was like three years old. And I obviously didn't didn't think that I was going to be a professional fighter then, um, and I just I, we just did it as a family a family thing and and I just loved it because of 
the martial arts, the actual art side of it was was what I enjoyed was, you know, like, doesn't matter how often you train or how many times you go through it, you're always going to have something you can learn or something you can grow on or something like that. And um, so, so like, that was, that's how I started. Um, and, and just, you know, transitioning and I lost your question. What was your question? Sorry. <laughs> uh yeah, ba basically, I, th I think you pretty much answered it. Just like when when did you know that you were going to be a fighter full time? Because I, I guess in America, like to not go to college, like it's it's a big decision. So I was wondering if there was if you were ever going to do. So if you ever thought about, oh, maybe I'll do something else, and then in the last moment you're like, you know what, I, I will definitely be a fighter, and that's kind of. And if if you're sort of still thinking about that decision and looking at it now, going, yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with the decision I made. I'm definitely happy with the decision I made, but I knew I was going to be a martial arts one way or another. You know, I, I coached at a gym from 2010 until um, November of, of this past year. Um, so I definitely knew I was going to be in the martial arts world, and, and coaching was definitely something I enjoyed. Um, but while I was coaching, I also knew I wanted to fight. And, and being realistic, I mean, you can't, you can't have a gym and run it and, and be successful and – go after becoming a, a world champion in in MMA and be able to put both both uh, or all of your heart and soul into both of those. And so I had to make the decision of, okay, am I going to coach people or am I going to fight? And which one do I want to do um, more? And it wasn't necessarily which one do I want to do more, but it's which one is, makes more sense to go after right now. And it was fighting because, you know, as a fighter, you only have a specific window of time. And so being as young as I am, I can continue and, and grow and, and be successful in that. But then I also know that I can always go back to, I can always go back to coaching. You know, I, you, there's no like age limit for that. You don't have to have a specific, you know, um, or there's, I guess there's no time limit on that. You know, you can always go back and, and, and help other people learn and grow. Um, so that was, that was the decision I made. And um, yeah. Yeah. In terms of fighting, I think I decided I wanted to fight when I was, like, 14 or 15. And then I really started training hard in, like, 15, 16, and then I made my debut at 18. Well, I was going <laughs> to say, one, one, of, one of the other interesting things that we noticed that you spoke about recently is how you're only on a 500-calorie-a-day cal diet. And to anyone who knows about nutrition, that's an insanely low amount, especially for an athlete like yourself. How would you say that's sort of affected you in terms of training and your performance during your fights? Because that, that was a very interesting point that you brought up. Yeah, I was on a way low-calorie diet, um, 500 calories. And then, obviously, that was a while ago, you know, and, we, and we've reversed um, or tried to get reversed out of it. Um, it was I'm – the, I'm the person that, you know, you tell me, to, tell me what to eat and tell me what to do, and I'm going to do it 100%, and, and I'm not going to question you. Um, of course, I should have questioned that, and now it's like everything I do now is like I ask. They're like, "Eat this." I'm like, "Why?" Well, <laughs> tell me why, and I'll do it. You know, so I, I'm I'm probably the opposite side of what I was, you know, and in, in, in an extreme fashion. But um, yeah, they put me on. I was put on a 500 calorie diet for my first cut to 115, and my body obviously responded well because before that I wasn't on a calorie deficit, and so my body responded well. Uh, I made it. The weight cut was not fantastic, but I think it was because I was on low body fat. And then when I tried to cut the water, you know, it was not fun, obviously. But mm -hmm. um, and then the second cut got harder. The third cut got harder. Um, I missed weight in one of those times due to personal issues, um, and and things that I could not control. And then um, and then I had another cut to 115, and. That last cut to 115, which is the most recent cut, is I walked into fight week and I had 18 pounds to cut. And so I cut 18 pounds for the last fight. And, um, again, that was a that was not a fun water cut. But I made it and I felt felt fine in, the, in terms of performance. But the one thing I've noticed is that the more, like, obviously every single time I have a cut or I have a fight, my body changes a ton. And I talk to all the girls and the female athletes in the gym, and and we're all the same way. You know, we're like, there's not one single fight that we feel like we look the same, where we feel the same, where we, you know, our body, our bodies just change all the time. 
And um, it's, it's definitely a mental battle that, you know, you're like, oh, I look heavier on this one, or I look, I have more body fat this day, or I have, or not necessarily this day, or like this fight, or, you know, my legs look bigger than, than my, they did last fight, or like, those are things that we, we struggle with. But the main thing is, you know, how do I feel? And um, how am I going to perform? And that's, that's one of the things that I've noticed is like, when I did my first cut to 115, I was super lean. Like I was super, super lean. And, um, and, and I didn't feel very great. You know, like I, I don't think that if I was to fight that fight again and it was a tougher opponent and it was a tougher fight that I would have gone all three rounds. Like, I don't know how my performance would have been, but I was, I finished in the first round. So I don't know. And I can't speak for that, but, um, but then like I had another fight when I, uh, went three rounds and I had more body fat and I had, you know, I was a little bit heavier, but I felt fantastic, you know? So that's one thing that I think all of us women need to kind of get over is, is a little less of like how we look and then more so how we feel and perform. Mm. Um, that's number one. And, and obviously, especially moving up to 125, uh, I was just talking about, I'm like, you know, I don't like the way I look all the time, but, but I feel great. And my power is, fan, uh, is, is, through the roof and um you know it's just a process and again i realized that this cut i'm still not where i want to be um in terms of nutrition or performance or any of that but it's definitely better than it was and it's continuing to get better so i'm trying to look at that as a positive and uh yeah not they're they're not good and they're not they're not fun and and they're not ideal for us athletes, but it is the way the sport is. And, and, uh, you know, you just got to make the best of it and just kind of look at it. Like, you know, I chose this life and, and this is a part of it that comes with it. And there could be, a, there could be worse things to do. And, and it's hard to be really upset and complain about something that you chose to do. So I always try to remind myself, you know, I chose this and, you know, I didn't have to do this. No one's telling me I have to go out and, and, and diet for 12 weeks and nobody's telling me that I have to go and run on a treadmill or, or that I have to go and work out three times a day or, or any of that. It's, I chose this life and I know the things that come with it. And, and if you're going to have the, the enjoyment of it, you're also going to have to go through the, the sacrifice and you have to go through the, the hard days and the, and the tired days and all of those days to get to where you want to go. So, um, just trying to learn to enjoy the process. 100% and I think that's one of the most interesting and exciting things about this fight that you're moving up to flyweight against uh, JJ Aldridge and people are curious you know what what this Macy Barber is going to look like when you've actually got some fuel in you Um, just by the way we appreciate your time Macy we'll let you go in just a moment but just wondering in terms of the flyweight division you've you made it clear that this is sort of a temporary thing you'll be there for about a year and then go back down to straw weight would you can like what what are the goals in this division are you just looking to stay busy and take fights and gain experience if you got a title shot in this division would you be open to it or, or are you just sort of looking at flyweight as a temporary thing before you eventually go and challenge for the title at straw weight yes <laughs> yes <laughs> to all of that um yes this i see i see this as being temporary um but i don't see it as something that i'm like i'll never fight at 125 or i'll never fight for the title at 125 it's more so the main reason why i did 125 is because i wanted to fight and fighting at 115 was not an option for me right now because of how bad my metabolism was like the way it was is that when i had my metabolism i was only burning 800 calories so if i was 130 pounds or however many pounds and you need to put me in a deficit to get down to 115 well then you can't drop your body any lower than 800 calories because you're not going to perform so if i wanted to fight again i needed to be able to perform in a camp and so if i need to be able to perform i need to have fuel and if i'm fueling then i'm gonna have higher calories and if i have higher calories then my weight's gonna go up and so like it did not make any sense or have any there was literally no way that i can fight at 115 and have a cut and get down to weight like I just my body has dieted so many times that it will not respond so what are you gonna take from 800 calories and put me on 200 or like 100 yeah. calories and, and ask me to work out like it it's just not something that I could do and so they're like we need to get you back up and if you need to get me back up then they need to they need to increase the calories which is going to increase weight 
because your body does not just switch overnight. You know, it's taken since November, I went from being at negative 60% and now I'm at negative like 30%. So my body is only burning up oh, like 1100 calories. So we're still not where we want to be. Um, but yeah, there's, that was the only option for me is to fight at 125. And so, um, that was the decision we made. And, and knowing that, knowing that now I'm fighting at 125, I also know that the cut and the, the nutrition process is still going and it's still going to continue to, to need to be worked on. So, um, 115 is not something that I can make yet. Um, but once I get my metabolism back up, then we can start to drop it back down in the right way. Um, so that I can lose the weight, but keep my metabolism burning so that I can continue to eat it, to perform, but while dropping weight. And that's just like, that's a slow, that's a slow turnaround, you yeah. know, um, yeah. took me forever to get to where I'm at. And now it's going to take me a while to get back to where I need to be, but it's better that I caught, we caught it now than we caught it, you know, then, then having me try to just continue to, to cut and cut and cut. And, and decrease calories and, and just go through that cycle of um, not performing well and then and then find out when I'm 26, 27 years old that, you know, my hormones are so messed up that someday when I retire, I won't be able to have a family or that, you know, when I retire, I won't be able to ever turn my te- metabolism around because there are people that, you know, once you re- ruin it, you can't get it back. And so... Um, I'm just happy that we got it. We're we're figuring it out now, than instead doing it later because, you know, it's it's a pain in the butt either way. Mm. But I'd rather struggle with it right now than, than later. Mm. Well, as we look to the fight uh, against JJ and we wrap up, just quickly, Macy, what's your prediction for this fight? How do you see it playing out? Well, obviously, with my hand raised at the end. <laughs> uh, at the end, though, that's. That's the key word, the end. I don't know when the end is going to be, you know. Um, is it going to go all three rounds? Is it going to be finished in the first? Is it going to be in the second? Is it going to be in the third? You know, I don't know. Um, you know, one of the things I like to think about is I don't know how it's going to be finished or how I'm going to win. I just know that I'm going to win. Um, and I was just talking to my coach, you know, earlier, and I was telling him, I'm like, you know, I just it, – it's it has nothing – I'm not being like a Ronda Rousey, but I'm like I just cannot picture myself losing. Like – when I go to the picture of the fight, I just don't picture myself not coming out successful. And that's just a mental thing that I, that I, would, that I do, you know. Um, but I definitely see myself coming out with my hand raised. Um, and, and hopefully it's in a dominant fashion or an entertaining one for, for everyone who wants to watch. Um, because, you know, that's, that's another way to win fans is having entertaining fights. And as you guys know, I, I like to fight to, to win. I don't fight to not lose. So you can definitely – prepare for me to to go out there and and at any time i can or any chance i I get i'm gonna go out and try to go for the finish yeah i think i think that mindset is exactly the reason why people enjoy watching your fights uh there you go guys macy barber takes on jj aldrich on march 23rd it's going to be march 24th here in australia and new zealand of course on UFC on ESPN Plus 6 in Nashville. A really, really stacked card, so definitely something to check out. Follow her on Twitter and Instagram, at Macy Barber. It was a really fun time getting to know you and chatting with you, Macy. Thank you so much for letting us into your home. Appreciate the time, and good luck in uh, in March 23rd. Thank you so much. I'd love to come out to Australia at some point, too. That'd be, that'd be great. We, we'd love to have you anytime. We've got koalas and, and surf, so come down anytime, even as a guest fighter. Oh, let's do it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Macy. Appreciate your time. Bye-bye. Bye.